Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the AFL Review Show of Round 17. We're back. No Callum again. I'm taking back, the baby. reins with Kerm. We'll be your co-host today. And yeah, we're going to talk Round 17. And I am really excited and pumped to talk about this round because a lot went on over the weekend. There were some really good games. Kerm, how are you going firstly? And look at that top. It's beautiful. Oh. To get the red shirt on, you know, the red and yellow shirt, it did something else. And I was away all week and actually at a rodeo of all things. So I had a lot to catch up on today. Um, and glad I, I, I had my eye on the, the Suns game. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, later on. But yeah, no, I'm keen to get stuck into this, mate. Let's do it. And we're going to start it off with our team review for the week, our fantasy teams, that is uh, Game Day Squad. And if you don't know about Game Day Squad, we are the first and only Fantasy game, utilizing blockchain technology. We have AFL, NRL. Go check us out. All of our links are down below as usual. So go down there, click and find out about what we're doing here at our network. We're super excited about the product that we have, and we can't wait for you guys to try it out, and it's free. So why don't you go down there, try it out. You never know. You may love it. But let's get into it. Kerm, I looked at the rankings again, Woo! and there's one thing that I saw. It is the Kermies. They are doing pretty good. Back to back, mate. Back to back. So in round three, we, yeah. we took out the comp, the open comp, and in round four, we've only gone and done it again. So I pulled this out of my clacker. Um, we had some last-minute decisions to make. I had Tom Libertore in there, um, and last minute changed it back to Stephen Cornelio with Jacob Hopper ruled as an emergency. Um, and my boy last week, Kadeen Coleman, was a laid out with uh, health and safety protocols. So I swerved into Daniel Rioli, who had a career day, absolutely took the it took it by storm. So we'll talk about him a little bit later on as well. But yeah, we've only gone and done it again. Who would have thought that the boys have gone back to back? And hopefully we'll make it through in a row next week. Mate, how good. And yeah, some big decisions there. Um, your team, as everyone can see right now, it is elite. It is electric. He has playmakers all over, people scoring big. <laughs> so it's no surprise. He's r really constructed this team quite well. Um, for me, though, not as good as a week as you, but I'm still in the top 10. We'd love to see yes. that. I've got fifth for the Caps League for the week. Um, I had some pretty shocking performances across the board. I'll touch on a decision that I made a bit later on in the oh, show. Oh, he wasn't that, happy. Yeah, he was not I regretted happy. it big time. <laughs> I got caught up in the bloody... We'll, we'll talk about it later, but irrespective of that, um, 1,828 points was enough to get me fifth. Um, I was only 60 points from getting third place, so it was quite close at the top there in the Cap League. Everyone's really competitive, and it's so fun to have fantasy back. We'll go to the Peanut Butters. I updated his one there. He scored 2,071 points for the week, of course. He is in the open competition, and he ranked ninth place for the week. Back in the top 10. Yeah. Exactly right. We missed him last week, and now we've got him back. So all the boys are back in the top 10. It's great to see. But let's move on. And this is probably the thing I've been most excited about. And, Kerm, I'm going to let you take this one away. Yeah. It is a round 17 moment of the round. So... The floor is mine, and my eyes were peeled to the AFL Live app because I didn't have access to watch the game, and I was just, you know, refreshing every second. And it, for a second there, I didn't refresh at all because I thought the game was over. Um, but goal after goal, uh, we clawed it back, and Charlie Ballard, like, the, the headlines are going to be Noah Anderson, but Charlie Ballard with that smother at the end to smother Jason Castagna was rolling into goal. He could have crawled in. Um, Charlie Ballard, that 1% really, really got us towards the end of the five-minute mark there and took us a long way, but Noah Anderson, they're going to remember his name for a long time. Everyone remembers the Carmichael Hunt uh, goal after the siren of Kazali's I was there against Richmond as well, so have it be. So, it, like, Noah Anderson is an absolute stud. At the age that he is, fantasy and in real life, the bloke is an absolute stud. He is so good, but... Why couldn't we do it last week? You know, like, it's just like against some other teams. Like, why couldn't we be in, in finals contention and do that? But you've got to take those wins when you get them. And no rants and hang your boots up and, and take a bow because you've got to smell the roses at some point. And that goal will take us a long way and you'll be remembered forever. Mate, what a moment. And I've actually made the executive decision because that moment was so good and there is absolutely no way that could be topped. If you haven't seen it, guys, go check out the last two minutes of the Gold Coast Suns game because it was unbelievable. Noah Anderson is so clutch. He's that guy. 
Yeah, Arsenal's like, games, baby. Siren. Yeah, like that is the stuff you dream of as a kid when playing footy. Yeah. And um, he delivered on the big stage. So credit to the Suns. What a game. There is no other moment of the round because nothing could even compete with her. No. So, no. But let's get into our studs and duds and our rookie watch review of the round. I'm going to take it away first with the studs of the round. And uh, the first one I'm going to mention is Andrew Brayshaw. Oh, my um, God. With the AFL Fantasy MVP up for grabs, Brayshaw has produced some of his finest work of the season this week. He had a huge 170 game day squad fantasy points. He had 36 disposals and 10 tackles as his two most notable stats. He is that guy. He has been that guy all year. Mr. All Reliable with Magnet. another monster week. Yeah. Dude, you can't say more, say more about Andrew Brayshaw. The guy is just a magnet. Oh, yeah. And the next guy here is pretty similar to him is Mitch Duncan. Um, He has been so good, and he's in some of his best form of the entire season right now. So if you're a fantasy coach, and for some reason you don't have Duncan in your lineup, get that fixed up. Put him in your lineup. He is on fire. He had 169 game day squad fantasy points in this one. He had two goals and 28 bloody kicks as a forward. That is midfield numbers. That is literally nearly cheating in terms of fantasy. Get him in your lineup. (laughs) Unreal. Unreal. Pretty good. Pretty good. My next guy is oh. Noah Anderson. You can see and everyone's up there, of course, you can see. But um, if he's moment of the round or maybe even moment of the year, I'm going to say... Oh, I love that. Goal wasn't enough. He had 167 game day squad fantasy points. His two most notable stats are his two goals, 22 kicks. How good for the Suns and Noah Anderson if he wasn't a fan favorite already, he's definitely a fan favorite now. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah. What a I, guy. I want his card so bad. He would almost be one of the most wanted cards for me on the top of my shopping list. I want it so bad. Well, hey, maybe we can organize something a bit later on. He's in my midfield. Ooh. Proud owner of Noah Anderson. <laughs> um, but the last one, I'll wrap it all up, is Callum Mills from the Sydney Swans. Uh, doing back. what he does best. Exactly. The Swans and Mills both struggled last week against Essendon, but they've both bounced back in a big way in round 17. He put up a huge 165 game day squad fantasy points in this one. He had one goal and 13 tackles as his two most notable stats. Another great round for Mills. Let's see if Mills and the Swans can keep it going. Big bounce back game from Mills. Thank goodness as well, because it's just so good to see when they're rolling and they're playing well. Um, yeah. Like that first quarter, like, what the hell? Yeah. Oh. Wow. You, you never figure it out. Like, you, you got to play him because he's so good and his upside is so large. But yeah, that bounce back was massive. Yeah, absolutely. But let's go to the flip side. Let's go to the duds of the round, the people that we're not going to praise, we're not too happy with. And I'm going to start it off with Jordan Dawson. And for his standards, this was a shocker. Most other players, this might be a career game. Um, Honestly, it was a tale of two halves for Dawson. In the first half, he had very little involvement, just could not get the ball in his hands, get any notable stats. So he didn't really score too well. But in the second half, he was much more involved with the game. He ended up getting a respectable score, but still, again, by his standards, probably wasn't what you were looking for. And as a fantasy manager and coach as well, wouldn't be too happy with that outing. No, exactly. And and you nailed it on the head by his standards because he's been so consistent and so good all year, but it really was the tale of two halves. If he repeated that second half, it's a very big day for Jordan Dawson. You can't drop him, but he is a dud this week. Exactly right. It literally, if he had the second half twice over, he would have had one of his normal yeah. 140 scoring yeah. <laughs> game day scored fantasy points game. Like he is just so good. But the next three people I'm going to mention, despite their standards, have had absolute stinkers. There's no excuse for it. Max Gorn with one of his worst games of the entire year. Now I just want to mention he's now splitting time in the ruck with Luke Jackson, and this is concerning moving forward for both of their fantasy productions. Of course, they are both so good. We touched on how good Luke Jackson did in the absence of Gorn. Now that both of them are playing, it looks like they want to be utilizing both. As a fantasy manager right now, this is not a good sign. This is not a recipe for success. I have serious concerns moving forward with both of those players. Yeah. 100%. 100%. You, you, you got to play Gorn. You still can't drop him yet. Um, but the signs leading into the offseason are, do they get split up? Is one going to be playing permanent forward? they got big decisions down at Melbourne. 
Absolutely. Nailed it on the head. Next player. It seems like it's either this guy or um, Jake Stringer every single week in this segment. But now it's Jordan Dugowie again yeah. for the second week in a yeah. row. This week was probably his worst week out of all the AFL games that he's played. He barely cracked 40 game day squad fantasy points in this one. Very little involvement. Had really big time on the ground as well. Nearly 100 minutes of the 128 total. Just no excuse for a player of his caliber. Terrible game. Yeah, and Kerman, that's going to wrap up my duds of the round, mate. Let's get into your Rookie Watch segment. Of course, we're a dynasty game here at Game Day Squad. Yep. So we love this segment. So get take it away, mate. I'm going to kick it off here with a guy who's pretty much just nailed his spot down on this, this screen here. It's Nick Dacos, and he's probably not going to go anywhere for the rest of the season. He had another massive day, 21 disposals. He kicked a goal and had 106 GDS fantasy points, and that's just about the norm for him right now. And in future seasons, that's going to be his, his floor because his ceiling right now is he could be as big as he wants to be, but... I'll move it on to the next guy, and he's just about as much as a mainstay, mainstay here as Nick Dacos, and that's John Newcomb, who's having an insane year. 25 yeah. touches last week and 89 GDS fantasy points. He is an absolute stud, um, and he's going to be a consistent beast for a long time as well. Um, and someone who doesn't get as much love but has been under the radar playing fairly well is Ben Hobbs, um, and he's a natural midfielder, but he's been finding himself playing forward for Essendon as he's struggling to crash Crack the midfield right now with Zach Merritt, Dylan Shield playing really good footy. But he had 13 touches, 5 tackles and a goal. And that's all going to 73 GDS fantasy points. But once he cracks that midfield, I think he's going to be a really good fantasy asset going forward. So those are three to watch. But Nick Dacos, he's got his name etched on the Rookie of the Year award already, I think. Essendon again. They just love love this part of our show they yeah, just seem to have all the do. rookies <laughs> they do um, all the time entering but yeah that is you're right about takeoffs and you can they just seem to be here every week yeah but you know the one Essendon player i don't think we have mentioned is nick martin where is this guy yeah this guy at the start of the year um everyone's talking about how he's a dynasty stud haven't heard from him in a bit he hasn't been playing too well either so hopefully he can you know get a roll on soon because we were so pumped and excited about his production earlier on but all right, and we're going to get into our next little part here, which is right and wrong, where we do some self-reflection on decisions that we made for our own fantasy teams on Game Day Squad. You had a peek at our teams before and saw how they did. Kerm, why don't you take us away with the two things that you did this week? Yeah, so I touched on it a little bit before earlier on in the show, but as I was all in last week with Kadeen Coleman, I was pretty shattered to find out that he was a late out with health and safety protocols. And I, I pivoted to Daniel Rioli, and I had a few options here. Uh, but Daniel Rioli is just in career best form, and it's so hard to ignore now because he's playing off half back and pushing up the wing and finding a lot, a lot of the ball, and he's using his foot a lot well. We, as well. We know that the GDS fantasy scoring model awards kicking, not so much handballing. So these kick-first players are definitely ones that have the higher upside. So I chucked Daniel Rioli in, and he went... Ballistic for about 130 GDS fantasy points, and I really, really needed that to go back to back. So I was happy decision. with that. Yeah. But what I got wrong, Lockie Neal. So I had some other options in here, such as Took Miller, Callum Mills, and I opted for Lockie Neal, who had just about his quietest day with Jai Cordwell going on the tag and having a great day himself. So that was something I got wrong, but I'm happy going back to back. We'll take the positives out of this week and go into next week with our heads held high. You know what? Now that you mentioned that name, I'm, he's very lucky he wasn't put at the dud section of the week. Oh, yeah. Lockie Neal. Yeah. Um, he did have a shocker. Again, just by his standards, um, he did a lot worse than Jordan Dawson, and they're quite similar level. We're talking about two elite players for their positions in terms yeah. of fantasy. Um, yeah. Great points there. What I got right this week is Tim Taranto, I mentioned, needed a starting role in my cap salary team, and he did have a starting role this week. And that was a great decision. Tim Taranto has been pretty good all year. Um, he's playing some really good footy at the moment. And it's so good to just have a nice forward in there who has such a high ceiling and a high floor as well. Someone I can rely on each week to just get me some points up there because it is quite thin in my forward pack, as I have mentioned before. But in terms of what I got wrong, what I got wrong was because of this decision to start Taranto. Um, I started Norton over Tom Papley for some reason. I got too caught up in this 
gradings Ouch. and one was a gold and it had a multiplier when realistically you just need to look at fantasy production and play the player that you think is going to score more in the week and I knew, I know that I thought Tom Papu was going to score more but I played Norton because of multiplier and what a terrible decision oh, don't do that Yeah, it's, it's do hard. That. stick it's, to your guns this is what GDS is all about it's the rarity it's a player name you got to weigh all, all these things up so that that's one that come back to buy you but next week it might be a different story Exactly right. But look, I'll be looking to make some adjustments and fix some things up in the preview show. So yeah, I already know how I'm going to tackle these little issues. But we're going to head into another part here. This is new on the show. So comment down below if you are watching. Let us know if you like this. But we want to give you some fantasy insight into some players. We're going to call this the player radar. We're going to talk about different players Summon some good light, summon some bad light. Just have a discussion in general. We're going to have a look at some thoughts and our opinions on these different players. Uh, Kerm, do you want to start this one off? It's new. Have a go. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm excited by this one. So it's one that we've talked about a lot so far, my first one, and it's close to home for me um, as he's quickly become one of my favorites, and that's Noah Anderson. I mentioned it before. If I could have any card in the game right now, it would be a legend Noah Anderson because I think in the long term, as we are a dynasty platform game, I think he's going to be a stud for a very, very long time. And he had his best day. Um, as he said, 167 GDS fantasy points last week. It was a career day. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot more of that in the future. So he's definitely on my radar. The next guy is Darcy Cameron. And this is someone that might be a little bit obvious for the classic AFL fantasy and super coach players out there but Darcy Cameron going into next year is what I'm more interested in is his dynamic with Brody Grundy now there are whispers out there that Brody Grundy will be on the trading block we don't know if that's actually real or not there's, there's always always speculation about this one too yep. two prominent ruckmen come up but Darcy Cameron his form has just been too good to ignore so that's definitely one to watch. If I could grab, grab a card of his and stash it away, maybe, um, that might be one to watch because I think he's going to be a really, really good option if he's got that sole ruck role. But whether or not Brody Grundy, he's got a massive contract, so if someone wants to take it on, good on him. But Brody Grundy could be on the trading block, and that makes Darcy Cameron very, very interesting. Oh, yeah. My next guy that I'm really interested in is Tom Atkins. Now, he's been getting a lot of midfield time through the Geelong midfield, and that has been really prominent for him. Now, he is a defender um, in GDS Fantasy, which makes him even better because those players who go into the middle do get that opportunity, which equals production, and Tom Atkins is definitely an advocate for that. So if I can snack him, that would be a massive win because he is really interesting, and I'd love to get him. But someone who's on the downtrend for me is Lockie Whitfield of GWS. He had his worst game of the year last week, and his role just is is what we don't know. We don't know what Lockie Whitfield is playing right now. I don't even know if Lockie Whitfield himself knows what he's playing right now. He's definitely not on the back line. He's sort of playing off half forward, working his way back down the wing. He's not using the ball as well as he did in previous seasons, and that's coming back to bite him now because I think his teammates and the GWS coaching staff are trusting him less. And that has an impact on his fantasy average as well. So Lockie Whitfield is on my radar for not the good reasons. It's, an, it's a bad reason for Lockie Whitfield. Yeah, what a nice little collection of players there in the player radar segment. Love that, mate. Yeah. Let me get into my ones. Um, Jack Viney, I'm going to start it off with. And he's God, he's been four good. Outings. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen to this. Four outings. Three of them have he scored over 130 game day squad fantasy points. Of course, the one week he didn't is the week that I picked him for lock of the round, I didn't round, want to guys. say it. <laughs> I didn't it's want just, to say it's, it. it. It's just predictable at this point. So why are we even surprised? I'm not, so it's all good. Um, but, you know, he's going under the radar. You've got players like Oliver, Petrarca, Gorn, even Luke Jackson, which everyone is talking about. Not many people are talking about Jack Viney and the impact that he's having week in and week out. So... He's been a player that I've been watching very closely and I really want to get his card and get him into my lineup because he is playing some really good footy right now. I love that. The next one, this is close to home. My boy, Chad Warner. He seems to be the little spark plug, the little swan secret weapon. And he is just oozing with confidence the more oh, yeah. and more that he plays. Like you can tell he is really in a groove right now, in a zone or whatever you want to call it. He's just... 
like just doesn't hesitate um, for a young player to play the way that he does, put his head down and just continue to drive forward. It's been awesome to watch. And, you know, he's 21 years old. He is setting up to be a dynasty weapon in yep. the future. He's scoring really big right now. I'm super excited for Chad Warner for my Swannies. And this is another player. Just give yeah. me this card. Come on. That's exactly right. He's going to be good for a long time and you're going to enjoy watching him every week for a very, very, yeah. very long time. My next one here is James Aish. And, you know, increased time in the midfield is a recipe for success for any player yep. that's playing AFL Fantasy. And this has been the case for James Aish uh, over the past couple of weeks. Compared to his first seven games, he has taken a big leap in performance and production. And if you're looking for a defender who's trending in the right direction right now, and you need to plug in a hole in your fantasy lineup, why not start him? I would strongly consider... My last one here. I need to give this guy his flowers because I'll get into it in a sec, but Rory Laird. Oh. You know, Andrew Brayshaw might be the man of the hour on most of our shows, but I'm predicting that Rory Laird is going to be the man of the year oh. once the AFL season has been wrapped up. I like it. I like oh, that yeah. a lot. He's going to finish as Game Day Squad's fantasy MVP once the season has concluded. He is playing out of this world right now, filling it up through so many different aspects of the game. It has been since round 10, which Laird has scored under 120 game day squad fantasy points in a game. But what is more impressive for me is his floor this season, which he has not fallen below the triple digit scoring in a single game. That is insane. And it. I I think he might be one of one this year. I need to do the numbers. I'll come back to you in another show. But I think no other player has done that over this season. Yeah, got to be close. And I love his plat. I'm so lucky. And the big reason that I've gone back to back is my platinum Rory Laird because that card is a <laughs> joke. It is a joke. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He has just been so good. But guys, that is going to wrap us up there for another episode of the AFL Game Day Squad Fantasy Show. We've been your host, Tom and Kerm. And if you've made it this far, we really appreciate you spending some time with us. But do us one quick favor. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and you want to continue to get AFL and NRL fantasy content week in and week out. We do two shows a week. We can't wait to share our platform with you again. We are from Game Day Squad. Check us out down below if you're not too sure what I'm talking about. But other than that, Kerm, is there anything you want to leave them with? Just get Game Day ready for round 18. Absolutely. Get game day ready and we'll check back in with you in a couple of days time for our preview show.